In the comments section, I got a question from one of our viewers named Hema Babu, and the question is, when I select the second component after selection of the first component for assembling, then the first component appears very much smaller than the second component in the graphics area. Then I don't know how to assemble it. And I think I understand what you mean, and this is a very common issue that people have. So let me show you some techniques in Creo Parametric for helping you when assembling. Here I am in Creo Parametric 3.0, and I'm using this version because this is the same version that Hamababu is using. So we'll start off by creating a new assembly, and normally I would change the name, but in this demo I'm not going to. I will use my default template. Let's click OK, and we will assemble our first component. And this is going to be for an engine assembly. Let me grab the left side of the crankcase. And for the first component, the overwhelming majority of the time, you'll be using the default constraint. And you can get to that by holding down the right mouse button and in the menu choosing default constraint. And we can see that it's fully constrained. You can hit the check mark in the dashboard or middle mouse button will do the same thing. And we have our first component placed. Let's put in our second component. And I'll click the assemble button again. Let's pick the right side of the crankcase. And in this situation, the components ended up relatively close to each other. And I'm going to drag this out. And maybe sometimes what will happen is that one component will be in one place and the other component will be far away. Or you're trying to assemble a very small component into a big assembly. What can help in that situation is using this button on the dashboard, which will display the component in its own separate window, which is called the accessory window. And you can reposition this window and you can change its size and you can position it where you want and you can rotate the component inside of here, which can help you when you are trying to assemble the new component. And right now, the component is still in the main window. If you click the Zoom All button, it should zoom in to the assembly. But in case it doesn't, you can turn off the display of the component in the main graphics area. You'll still see the 3D dragger, which you can turn off from this button over here. And now I can position the component so I can see both. We can say, hey, let's pick this cylindrical surface over here and this cylindrical surface over there. And then we will pick this flat surface over here and this flat surface over there. And right now it says, oh, I want those surfaces to be normal. Let's make them coincident. And now I can't tell how they're oriented. So at this point, I will turn on the display in the main window again. And I can turn on the display of the 3D dragger and see that there's still one rotational degree of freedom. Let's rotate the components approximately how I want them to be. And that way I can say, hey, to eliminate that last constraint or that last degree of freedom, let's pick these two holes to line up. And now I've got the component positioned the way I want. And we can hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And I'm just going to show you assembling one other component in here just to repeat those tools. Let's hit the assemble button and I'm going to grab the cylinder in this case. And because I was using the accessory window, it keeps it open. If you no longer need it, you can always toggle it on and off. But this might be really helpful for you for positioning your components. So again, we can pick cylindrical surface, cylindrical surface. And we can use the 3D dragger to reposition the components as we're working on them. And I can pick a flat surface here and a flat surface over there. We don't want an angle between them. Let's change that to coincident. And I'm partially constrained. If I go to the placement tab, there is the ability to allow assumptions in which it can guess at a rotation angle. But I want to make sure that the holes in this part line up with the hole in the cylinder. So I'm going to turn off that assumption. And I've got the uh, rotational degree of freedom still. And in this case over here, it would be helpful to turn off the display in the main window. Just to make sure that I can pick the references that I want for my new constraint. This cylindrical surface there, that cylindrical surface. And 
turn on the display in the main window to make sure I've got it correct, and then hit the check mark. So again, what I hope answers your question is that when you take a look at the dashboard, you can turn the display of the accessory window on and off. You can turn the display of the component on or off in the main window. And you also have the 3D dragger that allows you to translate and rotate the component as you're assembling. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.